Hey, this is Kenneth, and today let's talk about crossband repeaters. So far, I've mainly been talking about just conventional repeaters and covering all the theory just considering them. Where a conventional repeater is a repeater that has the transmit and receive frequencies both within the same band. A crossband repeater is effectively just like a conventional repeater, except that the two bands for the transmit and the receive frequencies are wildly different, right? As for a conventional repeater, uh, being within the same band means that they're off, they're about 1% away from each other, where being on two different bands, you would have, say, your receiver uh, tuned to the 144 megahertz band, which is, you know, 144 to 148, and you have your transmitter up in the 440 band, which is wildly different and, you know, isn't at all in the same frequency range. It's a completely different band. Uh, this means that the, the, the main appeal here is that in your, looking at your block diagram here, this is your typical repeater where you have the controller, a transit radio, a receive radio, an antenna combiner going to the antenna. It makes this antenna combiner much, much easier. In a conventional repeater, when we're looking at about a 5 megahertz split between the transmit and receive frequencies, your antenna combiner is going to cost somewhere in the order of several hundred to several thousand dollars. You can get a cheap Chinese duplexer for about a hundred dollars, but they really aren't that good. Um, and so by moving these two frequencies farther and farther apart, this becomes easier and cheaper to the point where if your two frequencies, I mean, so for this example, let's say that my transmit frequency is on 446.050, which is a amateur UHF simplex frequency. And then my receive is 146.535 megahertz, which is an amateur two meter simplex frequency. You can see that the frequencies are, you know, literally like three times different. And this antenna combiner no longer needs to be a several hundred dollar duplexer but instead can be what's called a diplexer. MFJ unfortunately labels their diplexers as duplexers, um, which makes this whole conversation a bit confused. But I, I very carefully say uh, di diplexer when it's two different bands and a duplexer when it is two frequencies within the same band. Um, so ignore that. But as you can see, this diplexer has three ports, right? This is the common port, so your antenna would typically go here. And then the low low port supports 1.3 to 225 megahertz. And your high port supports 350 to 540 megahertz, right? So you would connect your UHF radio to here, your VHF radio to here. And this module only costs, I believe it's something like $25. So $25 for this versus several hundred dollars for a cavity duplexer, and there's no tuning, right? This surpasses every frequency within this band without any tuning, and every frequency in this band without any tuning, right? The reason why it's so much, why it doesn't require any tuning and why it's so much cheaper is that it doesn't use cavity filters, but if we turn it over, I've taken the back off, and you can see that it actually just uses inductors, and then on the back side of the board, there are capacitors. So this is actually just a seventh order high pass and low pass filters, right? As you can see on the high pass filter, the inductors are going to the ground plane and on the high, uh, low pass, let's see, sorry. Yeah. On the low pass, um, the inductors are in series, right? And so the, the series inductors here block UHF and then the, inductors to ground or bypass inductors here would shunt the VHF to ground, right? But needless to say, I'm not, I'm not here to talk about RF filter design, but the main thing is that this is much cheaper and much simpler, right? Um, which means that suddenly you have much more options as far as deploying crossband repeaters. So they tend to see a much broader and kind of eclectic set of applications in a conventional repeater. Um, to the point where, I mean, this, this is so simple that uh, many mobile radios that you can buy for your truck support crossband repeater modes. So you, it's literally just a button, so you set, um, so on, on radios that support two VFOs, you can set two different channels, 
click the crossband repeat button and it'll and they'll have in, built into them a diplexer like this that lets them transit and receive on the two frequencies. Um, but let's talk about applications of crossbanders, right? So the first application that you can think of would be just use it like a conventional repeater. Like a conventional repeater. Right, so literally you could treat a crossband repeater just like a conventional repeater, except that instead of having a 600 kilohertz offset or a 5 megahertz offset, it's got like a 200 megahertz offset. Um, programming this in radius tends to be a little bit problematic and users are not used to it. Um, and so it's a little bit squirrely and you don't tend to see that much, but it is actually an option. You could have everyone listening on 446.050 and when they push the push to talk button on their handheld, it would have it go all the way down to 146.535 to transmit, which the repeater would then receive and retransmit on 446. Um, unusual use case, I've never actually used one like that, but it is an option. Uh, another application for it is bridging, bridging to simplex frequencies. All right, and this is a more common application, which I tend to do every once in a while. Um, and it uses a mode of crossband repeat called bi-directional crossbanding, where the controller doesn't only support routing audio from the receive radio to the transmit radio, but also from the transmit radio to the receive radio. On the user's side, it, it, what it would look like is that if half of your users happen to be using this frequency, as a simplex channel, they would all be able to talk to each other directly and the repeater would also be able to hear them. Your second group of users on 146.535 would also be talking to each other just like a simplex channel and so they would all be able to hear each other directly but the repeater would also be able to hear them. And so when you enable a bridging bi-directional crossband repeater what it does is it anything that it hears on this channel it would retransmit on this one so that all the other simplex users would be able to hear these. Um, anything that it hears on this channel, it would also retransmit over here, so all of your second group of users will be able to hear the first. And as long as everyone stays within range of this bi-directional crossband repeater, it would seem like they're all on the same frequency. Somewhat useful when you have two groups of users with different, you know, because it, it's some radios only support VHF and some radios only support UHF, um, and so it's somewhat useful there. It's also useful if you only want to periodically bridge these two channels, right? And so um, what we would, if we wanted to have, you know, some, some group of users is real chatty on here and we only want to be have to have to listen to them on this channel every once in a while, we could then conditionally turn on and off the controller to bridge these two channels so that they're effectively one. Um, which I have also used that in a single, by, single directional um, way of quietly monitoring another channel. Right, and so you could have it that you have a group of simplex users on this channel and they are unaware or they can ignore the fact that there is a crossband repeater at all and this crossband repeater would essentially just, you know, CC the second simplex channel, 446, any activity that happens here, you would just also hear here. Um, I I have used systems like this where your primary, um, well, I, I've used it in a couple different scenarios. One of them was actually at a railroad museum as we had our operations team on this frequency and they were all on simplex and all talking to each other. And they were unaware of this crossband repeater. And then on this channel, um, on the transmit channel of the of the crossbander, we had our mechanical department, right? And so as a mechanic, we would be able to sit there and we would talk to each other on simplex without bothering the operations department. But anything the operations department said on the radio, we would also hear, which was somewhat convenient because it meant that we had a better idea and better situational awareness of what was going on without disturbing the operations team with all of our radio chatter in the mechanical department. Um, I've also used it to uh, link 
remote sites into our primary dispatch channel so that we could have a good idea of what's going on at remote sites without having to have them hear or without them being able to hear all of our dispatch. Um, kind of a convenient carbon copy sort of thing. Uh, and a very popular use of crossband repeaters is what's called um, is tying a local simplex channel into a repeat into a remote repeater. Um, and this is so, uh, oftentimes called uh, talk around uh, or walk around frequencies or um, I'm blanking on the other term for it, sorry. But I, I use this quite a bit where it's set up like a bi-directional repeater, um, but one of your two radios isn't on a second simplex frequency, but is on actually a remote repeater, a remote conventional repeater. Um, I, uh, I think that the California Highway Patrol uses this quite a bit um, because the thought is, you know, you would have this in your, in like in your vehicle, you could have this be a very high power 50 watt mobile rig, uh, configured to some sort of conventional repeater, not, not the simplex channel, but a conventional repeater channel. Um, and be able, when you're in the car, it would be real nice and easy and you'd be able to reach the repeater. But as soon as you walked out of the car, if you were on just a little handheld, you wouldn't be able to hit the remote repeater just because it's so far away. And so um, these are called vehicle vehicle crossband repeaters. Um, a real popular one back in the day was uh, the Pyramid SVR 200, which is this. And so what it literally has is inside of it, it has a two watt radio, right? Which is real low power, comes out on this B and C connector here. And this is a, um, and then inside of it, it's got a repeater controller and a low power two watt radio. And then this is the interface connector that you would then interface to your mobile RAID, right? And so the, the, the pyramid essentially covers um, these two blocks here, and you would interface it with your high power mobile radio, right? And so whenever you stepped out of, so when you're in the car, you would use this radio with on this frequency to talk to the conventional repeater. And then when you stepped out of the vehicle, you could then use this frequency instead, and it would be like you're still talking on the repeater, right? And the the two watt transmitter here is pretty reasonable if you're only within a you know, couple hundred yards of your car, because you only need about about two watts to get there, right? And so that's a real real that's one of the probably my favorite uses for crossband repeaters is tying local simplex channels with low power users into a remote conventional repeater. So it's like all of them in that small region happen to have high power uh, radios. Um, this gets, can go be taken to actually a further application where you have several separated conventional repeaters with crossband repeaters tied into them. All right, um, and this is something that I, I know that a lot of uh, like wildfire uh, groups will use um, is that if you have multiple different mountaintops here, right? So if you have three mountaintops that all have conventional VHF repeaters on them that each cover a certain region, you could then have a UHF crossband repeater linking the three of these, right? And so if you had a VHF user here, he would be able to talk to all, all the other VHF users within this coverage region through the conventional repeater on VHF. Um, and then what you would do is you would have the VHF repeater as just this one block in a crossband repeater. Um, and so, or I guess it would, you know, just this, just one of the blocks. You know, so you have a whole conventional repeater here, and then anything that came into this conventional repeater, you would also send out on this UHF channel to route it from here to this one and this one, right? And so then from there, the crossband repeaters at those sites 
would rebroadcast it on VHF to all of their local users, right? And so one VHF user here on this conventional repeater, it, his audio, his, his transmission would get retransmitted as VHF here and get retransmitted as UHF, which would have a wider coverage range on these mountaintops. These two VHF repeaters would then also retransmit them as VHF so that your audio from here would go from here to here to here and then someone over here listening on a different VHF pair would also be able to hear you like you were all on one repeater. And this is called a linked repeater system. Um, this, this, uses, this is a very, very basic linked repeater system where you have a single simplex channel tying all of these repeaters together um, in both directions. Um, you can get much, much more sophisticated linked repeater systems, but that's beyond the scope of anything I've had to build because I tend to build just temporary deployments and simple one system repeaters that don't need to be interlinked. But there's all sorts of options once you uh, start talking about linked repeaters. That gets real complicated. But yeah, so that's about it. Um, so crossband repeaters are block diagram wise exactly like a conventional repeater, except that um, your antenna combiner system is much cheaper and they have much broader applications since they aren't always this one, you know, in one radio out the other on two set frequencies, right? Um, you know, and I've gone over many of the ones I can think of. There's pro likely several other applications for it, but that's kind of just an introduction to the difference between them. Um, in the next video, what I'm actually going to do is work through a design example using what's called a RIC, or a, radio, a Motorola Radio Interface Communications Kit. This is about as basic as it gets for repeater controllers. Um, and I'm gonna start there just to kind of walk us slowly into it. And we'll actually build a crossband repeater using that and two radios and this diplexer. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, any, any specific interests in where you want this video series to go, let me know as well. And next time we'll build that crossband repeater. Thanks for watching. Bye.